Greetings everyone. This tutorial is designed for students at Ted Rogers School of Management at Ryerson University to analyze data um, dealing with uh, retail, consumption, and the like. The software we are using at the moment is SPSS and following are the topics that we will be discussing today. how to create new variables and in this uh, tutorial we'll be showing you two examples number one is the example dealing with uh, recoding and the other one is to use compute to create a new variable and then in recoding we'll show how one can recode um, one variable into um, itself or in in this particular example into a new variable the use of multiple response sets, what are these and how can they be useful, some basic graphing using Pareto charts, um, missing value analysis and to show what happens if you have missing values in your data set and what can you learn from values that are actually missing in your data set, some outlier analysis if time permits and also weighting cases in an analysis. So. First, we um, would like to mention that uh, the book that we are using is Statistics for Marketing and Consumer Research by Mario Mazzucci, and um, the author is based in Italy, and it's a fantastic book. I like it. It's, it's one of those books that does not have any photographs in it, so you can teach rather than paying for colorful photographs. Uh, there are data that we are using from the um, author, and the data are available at the link that you see on the website. So please click on this link to download the SPSS data files that we will be using for this um, assignment. First, let's quickly look at the Pareto um, chart, which is available under Analyze, um, Quality Control, Control Pareto Charts, and you say Simple, Define, you select NES from here, and you get this. Now, you see that it has uh, sort of shows how values change, but if you want to see how the uh, impact is on missing values, um, you have to filter the data first. So I would go data, select cases, and I would say um, select cases if um, missing dummy, which is here, is not equal to one. This is assigned for not equal right here. Remember this variable is one if we have the information and then we have other categories. So I select this and I say continue, click on continue and then um, if I look at the data set uh, you will see that all values which do not have one they are not selected actually. See job category known are not selected and only those observations are selected for which we have either 0, 11 and 12. And now I run the uh, the chart, um, the quality control chart, and I get this value. And just give me a second here and cancel. And nope, nope, here we go. And then this chart is repeated here, and you can see only two um, not classifiable for classifiable for other reasons and occupation not stated and bingo that's the case. Now um, the outlier analysis is a very interesting feature basically if you were to take the um, assumption or, or the definition that in values an outlier if it's um, more than um, uh, 2.5 times the mean um, um, so if the standard deviation is 2.5 times the, no sorry, the mean is more than 2.5 times the standard deviation, then you don't want those values. So let's have a look at it. Now I'm going to just do, do quickly a few things. First of all, I'll go back to the data and um, I will, first of all, data, select cases, all cases, so I unfilter it, then I go into um, data. and analyze 
explore dependent variable is uh, total consumption Plot and ooh, okay, this is a little here. Now let's see. We've got the mean value, right? The ninety-five percent confident interval, five percent term mean, median, standard deviation is five, minimum is twenty-seven, and maximum. There are people spending thirty-three hundred pounds or thirty-three three thousand three hundred sixty-one pounds um, in. in in weekly or monthly consumption, and there are people who are spending as little as 27 pounds. Quite a range in our data set, right? Now, of course, some of well, these are outliers, and one way of looking at it is looking at extreme values. If you look at the highest five values, they go from 3361 all the way to um, 1460. So these are the highest, and these are the lowest values, right? Highest five and lowest five, and one can actually uh, use again weight cases by saying okay I will not treat any data over um, uh, 2.5 times standard deviation 325 and uh, plus 388 which is the mean right so what is about 700 325 times 2.5 let me get my calculator here we go 325 times 2.5 5, that's 812 plus 388 and that's 1200 so you know I'll just get data select cases um, and I'll just say if and click here and I can get rid of this I don't need it anymore I say out you go um, EFS if EFS is less than um, twelve hundred. Include this. Continue. Right. Okay. And uh, let me look at the data. You will see data view um, here. This point. This record forty is excluded because it's spending eighteen hundred. Right, this one is 60 is excluded, 1256. And if I were to do the explore again, and I say OK, and I get the table again, and this time the mean is 350, and uh, the standard deviation has gone down to 232 because we got the extreme values out. You could see that instead of having 3000, much lower than that, and we still haven't done anything about the lower extreme values, which I will leave you to wonder. Or, or deal with. So in the end I'm uh, hoping that um, these few key tricks and recipes in SPSS are of uh, help. Um, feel free to learn the software from its manuals. You know there's a button called help. You press it there's some interesting information that is revealed. Usually it's helpful because it's under help. Um, it's um, also good to um, use the internet right? Um, and type how do you use multiple response sets in SPSS and you'll find tons of help there so SPSS uh, you know Google is the your ticket out to uh, efficiency for so good luck and um, uh, good luck with the analysis